Hey guys, welcome to another Home Lab series video today. In today's video, we'll be having a little bit of fun and we'll be setting up a self hosted Redux server. Um, essentially, it's kind of like a bookmark manager, but also actually shows you how, uh, shows the content um, for like, you know, like web pages and stuff like that on itself too. So it'll essentially download the content onto the server and then you can use it to read offline or uh, whenever you want in your own time. So um, this is kind of nice, especially if you like have like a lot of content you just want to kind of like download and save to like recipes that you want to read later or something else that you're like, hey, I want to, you know, keep track of news for your stock. Um, this is kind of a good way to kind of do that. And then if you're, you know, lose internet, bad snowstorm, something like that, so um, you can easily just log into your server as long as you have power, as long as you have power, uh, can log in and read it there. So, so we'll show you how you get started um, and have some fun. So let's do it. All right, so the few first steps that we will do is prep our server. Um, this is most most of the prep stuff um, in here. It's kind of just prep work that will go through our automation to create a VM. Um, if you're more interested in how like you know each step kind of works, feel free to check out my automation series. Um, that's kind of where I put most of the steps, plus a little bit in my home lab, depending on what kind of steps you're looking for. Um, but for the most part, um, the general steps here is we're going to update the DNS. Um, and add a DNS record for this. So read deck in a, and we'll set the IP here to be 92. So we've got to remember that one, guys. <clears throat> add read deck, read deck. And then we'll also need to add it to our Ansible um, playbooks direct um, repo. Um, in its inventory file. This is important so that essentially our AWX instance will be able to run against this server when it creates the VM. Um, if it doesn't exist here, then it won't know, hey, you know, what, what am I supposed to do with it, right? So we'll just add it also here, read deck and commit read deck. Awesome. So we'll let that run. There's all this cool pipeline stuff that runs in the background for this. If you're interested, really go check out my automation series videos. Um, it's a really cool, I mean, I enjoy automation. It makes things look so much cooler when you kind of do it. And then when you have to build out like, you know, 200 VMs, it makes sense. Um, Got to log in. All right. So what we'll do here is go to our templates and we'll go through our workflow in here. So we'll launch this, which will create our new VM, patch it, install Docker, which is a requirement. Um, this, this, this will install Docker and Docker Compose in my playbook, but we only need Docker. Um, certs and then set up Nginx. So the, the last two are nice um, because then you could go to like HTTPS, www, whatever. Um, in this case, um, this, the HTTPS, I couldn't get the redirect to work correctly with this um, self-hosted application. So we won't do that part, um, but maybe in the future we'll come back to it. So host name, we'll name it as Redeck. The IP was the 172.16.1.92, which is what we put in DNS. Um, then we'll just do like dragon Redeck. And the, the proxy address and then the proxy headers, this is for the NJX. So essentially we would do like, normally we would do like HTTP localhost and then whatever the container is running. Um, but in this case, um, we're just gonna put something in random like this um, so that it will run. I need to redo the options here so that essentially if I don't want it, I can just turn it off. Most of the time you do want it running though because you're like, hey, I want, you know, HTTPS. <laughs> Um, but in this case, that, that I couldn't get that to work. So we'll just leave it um, as a random address and that should be good. So we'll hit launch here. So go through our steps here. It'll take a few minutes to kind of, you know, create it, spin it up, patch it and install the stuff. So we'll fast forward the video once it's done. All right, now that the VM has finished installing and setting everything up, what we can do is open a terminal window we should now be able to SSH to it and get a terminal prompt. Um, so redeck.dragon.local. We'll accept the host key and we'll log in. So 
um, from here, you can easily see that, you know, we got like Docker installed and that's really all you need at this point. Um, so what we'll do here is we will look at Redeck um, at Docker. Um, so this is just a simple web application that lets you save precious readable content of web pages uh, you like and want to keep forever. So essentially this is what we all get once we have it installed. So we can go down and look at the installation, which is actually pretty simple. There isn't actually that much to it. Um, they even actually make it into one Docker line command. Um, but what we'll do here is actually edit that. Um, so we'll actually make a like um, start Docker script here. Bin bash, paste this. Oh. Right click to paste. Um, and then the only thing that we'll do here is actually add the detach command so that it doesn't run uh, in the foreground essentially so that you have, you know, you don't have the logs appearing in. So um, then we'll need to make it executable. So we'll chmod the file. And then what we'll do is cat it so I can show you. So what it'll do is actually open 8000. Um, on this machine to the Docker container and forward it to 8,000. So essentially 8,000 is what you need to know here. So we'll start it. It'll pull, pull down the image, download it. It's like 15 megabytes, so it's like super small, um, which is how most Docker containers should be. We can do a Docker PS. You can see that's up for six seconds. So what we should be able to do here is go to HTTP and go to... Uh, read deck dot dragon dot local and 8000 is the port it'll prompt you with the the login that you want to use dragon dragon dot local or create and then now you're you're all set so this is essentially how it looks um it's a pretty simple interface so it even tells you you don't have any bookmarks, copy the link and start to start saving. So let's say for example, I want like something for like CES news, right? Um, so I think CES happened just recently, like the past week. Um, and we'll click on something like this, right? So we'll, I, I'll, let's say I want to, you know, save this article for later. Let's copy the link, save the link. And you'll see that it spins, downloads the link. And now you can click it and essentially read it like how you would have read it on the website, but it's all in your home lab. Um, so if you don't have internet connectivity, it works out pretty well. It even downloads the images and essentially generates a web page that will look very similar to how it looks on the actual web page. Um, best part about it, there's no ads, guys. <laughs> it just downloads the contents that it needs. Um, but definitely will be interesting to kind of see. I haven't looked at the CES stuff. Um, oh yeah, CES just happened. Um, I'd be interested to see what kind of tech they have. I think a lot of it's going to probably be go around AI and and how to you know make things cooler essentially. So or use it better. But um, that's kind of like the gist of this. There's other things that you can do, like hit, do labels for stuff. So you can you can label each one to like you know categorize. Um, as well as um, there's a unread bookmarks versus read. You can archive some of them or you can favorite them if it's like a, you know, link that you want for like a recipe. So, um, but that kind of just con consists of the gist of this um, self-hosted uh, kind of web content bookmark manager thing. Um, so hopefully if you guys like it, you'll set it up in your own home lab. Um, but other than that, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.